Good morning, everyone. Got a video for you today talking all about the upcoming, potentially leaked, rumored, whatever, Sony Pro Controller. Now, I have been a huge, here's my prop, I have been a huge, huge, huge supporter of the Xbox Elite Controller way back to Gen 1. You can go back and look at my channel. I have talked and loved and admired this piece of hardware for so long. And I have constantly begged Sony, please Sony, don't screw me, give me one of these controllers for the PlayStation. They have partnered in the past with Nikon and I guess sort of with Scuf, although I don't think it's been an official partnership. And while there are other ways to get a professional Sony Pro controller, never once has it been an OEM solution. The closest we came was the back button attachment, which was part of the DualShock 4 controller, which added two paddle buttons on the back. It plugged up underneath the bottom of the controller. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I ranted and raved about it. I had hoped they'd do something similar with the DualSense controller, but unfortunately, still nothing yet. However, I've been seeing a lot of news over the last day or so talking about this new PS5 Pro Controller and what it may entail. To understand the story, we gotta go back in time to some of the patents that have been released over the last year or so regarding the DualSense 5 controller. And patents are kind of a crapshoot when it comes to what the intent or ultimate design of something will be. We can't always take that at face value. A lot of times patents are thrown fast and loose and high and wide essentially to ensure that there are no issues when it comes to um, making sure, oh, we didn't legally cover this. So you gotta kinda read between the lines, but it's no secret that Sony has been throwing a lot of patents lately when it comes to pro controllers and when it comes to the concept of a controller that has potentially reconfigurable thumbsticks and paddle attachment accessories built into it just like the Elite Controller has the back paddles built in here. Now, where this really starts to get interesting is we've been getting even more news now, following more reports and more leaks. The latest one comes to us from uh, Tom Henderson, and he was talking a lot about he has actually seen, although not posted, actual kind of uh, information on what this controller can look like, and some of the potential features it includes. The whole article is on the Try Hard Guide website. I'll post a link to his original blog post in the description below while you're down there subscribing to this channel. Do yourself a favor and read it and give him a like and a follow as well because I'll tell you what, he has always been really good about this stuff and I don't think he chases a lot of red herrings. So I tend to believe what he's saying is factual. It says that Sony's working on a what they call a genuine professional controller for the PlayStation 5 that will be revealed in a few weeks, which, my goodness, please reveal this thing already, will ya? Um, uh, he has seen pictures of this alleged prototype codenamed Hunt, like Duck Hunt. <laughs> uh, and it will have several interesting features, including removable, removable analog sticks. I'll get back to that in just a moment trigger stops and rear button attachments. Um, he, like I said, he has supposedly seen pictures of this. Obviously he's not gonna leak them because everybody wants to remain anonymous, blah, 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 I understand. Um, but the idea set, he goes on to say that one of the biggest changes is the analog sticks themselves, which is this idea of removable analog sticks. So right now on the Elite Controller, the closest thing we get to a removable analog stick is we can take the cap off of the front of the stick. So you can change the top of the controller. It can become concave, it can be convex, it can be a long pull, it could be a short pull. Lots of options there. And I've talked a lot about the importance of that at length in other videos, but to summarize it here, it's look and it's feel really makes a big difference depending on if you wanna play a racing game will be tuned differently than a twitchy first person shooter than a more traditional action adventure game, okay? I think that all makes sense. So keeping all that in mind. Um, 
The idea though of a button underneath the analog stick and the analog stick potentially being reconfigurable is something that is very intriguing to me. Most controllers support one of two configurations. This is, the, this is where it is not the same plane. Obviously this analog stick is higher than this one. We know from a PlayStation controller, which of course they don't have here for the video, why would I? Um, we know that they're in a row, right? They're, they're the same parallel but you could potentially change that configuration. And that is an idea. The nice thing about that, and really from a, not just from a look and feel of like, hey, I want this to, you know, I don't like the controller up this high, I want it down a little bit lower. It's more from the repair perspective. Uh, a good friend of mine, I just found out that he bought a controller where they, he bought a custom controller where they glued the analog stick to the PCB underneath. They glued it down. Doesn't mean the analog stick doesn't move. It means the, the housing that is underneath the analog stick, the, the actual little controller device there, was glued to the PCB inside the controller board, rendering it absolutely unreplaceable. And he has to throw the entire thing away because of stick drift. And he cannot get that piece fixed. A lot of modular design has gone into the Elite Controller to repair things. You can break down to this piece and replace it. You can replace the plastic bumpers, which I have done more than once. You can get in here and toggle and look at the ports on the buttons in the back here. That's what makes a controller nice, is the repairability of it. And let's face it, all peripherals, keyboards, mice, controllers, and even headsets to a large extent, are unfortunately not gonna last forever because they see a significant amount of wear, wear and tear. Playing a game, moving a controller around quite a bit, obviously building up dirt and grind and grit inside the actual connection of the controller will ultimately kind of render it uh, damaged over time anyway. A good cleaning will fix a lot of that. But if Sony really is going to the trouble of allowing us to completely replace that piece, the maintainability and the serviceability on it goes through the roof, number one. Number two, it opens up a wide idea of potential aftermarket modifications later. Getting controllers that have a more aggressive pull, ones that are harder to resist, you can then change the tops on the sticks and, and you can really go off in a wild set of directions. If that is true and Sony is absolutely doing this, I'm very intrigued by this. Now the buttons on the back, that is definitely not anything uh, un, you know, uncharacteristically wild. It was the reason I bought the original Elite controller was for the paddles on the back. The idea that you never use the face buttons again, which means your right thumbstick never leaves the right analog stick, definitely gives you significantly more control in any game. But a lot of companies have put their own spin on whether the paddles on the back are uh, orientated uh, vertically or horizontally, if there's two buttons or four buttons, whether they are um, configurable or not. We've seen a lot of this before. Scuff has had a lot of say and play in this. Obviously, Elite Controller has their own spin on it as well. So I would absolutely expect that to happen. And then lastly, the trigger guards, I think are a very welcome change as well. Uh, PlayStation uh, hopefully follows suit with the Xbox having three separate settings right here for the trigger guards. And this determines how much this actual stick pulls down. If I do it uh, all the way down, you can see we got a hairlock trigger there, which allows you to shoot much, much faster gives you a much faster response time in games if you so desire, which is exactly what a pro controller should do. The one feature I do not see mentioned here, which I'd be very curious about, is something we saw in the Nacon controller, and I believe we saw it in, was it maybe the Razer controller? Because everybody's really taken their spin and their unique take on a PlayStation Pro controller, and that is the uh, removal of motors and the changing of the weight. This controller, this Elite Controller Series 2 is a brick. It's very heavy. When I'm holding it for a long period of time, I have to rest my wrists on my legs because holding it out in front of you, it's heavy and it kicks like a horse. I love it, but it kicks like a horse. Um, having the ability to change out motors or reduce them to change the weighting would be a huge deal in the competitive scene where a lot of 
pro competition doesn't like having that vibration feature enabled, but I think it would also do wonders for battery life and for just general customization. So to me, none of this is revolutionary. This is exactly what we've been doing on PCs for years. We take our PC case, we have the core components. There are a litany of components to select from. We can mix and match and build a perfect rig suited to our needs. We've never really seen that level of customization in the controller. Yes, you can go out and spend a ton of money on pro controllers like Scuf or uh, Battle Creek or uh, Razer or, N or Nacon or there's many others. I know I'm not naming some of them, not just, just because there's so many, I can't remember them all. But the idea here is that the more customization you give us, the better. So Sony is finally ready to pull the trigger on that I see that as a huge game changer. I see that as a major, major competitive change to what we have seen in the past, and I really, really hope it's true. So, if the rumors are meant to be true, maybe in a couple weeks, we'll be talking about it in more detail. For now, unfortunately, it's rumor and speculation, but a topic I absolutely wanted to cover with you guys today. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care of yourselves, and until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.